So well, I'm here today with um, Dr. David Semeraro, consultant um, histopathologist at Royal Derby Hospital. Welcome. Morning, David. thank you. Thank you very much for coming in. Today uh, we're going to talk about the acute inflammatory response. So that's sort of fundamental to uh, all sorts of processes in medicine, sort of yep. uh, most of the infective things that we see and uh, all of the diseases and even further down the line acute inflammation is related to ageing and cancer but we're going to talk about the, the fundamentals of it today. That's right I think it's important to understand the acute inflammatory response because as you say it's it's very widely uh, seen in clinical medicine and it's important to understand the, the, the method by which the inflammatory response comes about. In terms of uh, what we're hoping to, to achieve in this podcast is to uh, bring about uh, or to explain some of the general concepts around the acute inflammatory response, uh, to look at the particularly the mechanism of the response and its components, and also to think about the consequences, the sequelae of an acute inflammatory response, which hopefully usually uh, leads to a, a resolution and healing. But sometimes, if the uh, if the injury or the the stimulus which is bringing about that response persists, then we can move from an acute inflammatory to a chronic inflammatory situation. So is, is there a spectrum then between acute and chronic or are they, are they separate things? They, they are, there is a spectrum I think and it's um, it's very difficult to sort of put a, a precise time scale if you like on yeah. where does acute inflammation stop and chronic inflammation begin uh, but usually with acute inflammation we're talking about uh, you know, days rather than weeks and months. Uh, and, uh, and from a histopathological point of view there are Different, uh, different cells are predominantly Ab- abso- there. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, as we'll come to see, the, the, the classical cell of the acute inflammatory response is the polymorph neutrophil, or polymorph for short, uh, whereas in chronic inflammation, a host of other cells come into play which are recruited to try and overwhelm whatever it is that's causing okay. the injury. But today we're talking to talk mainly about acute inflammation. So exactly. Let okay. me digress. Okay, so um, why then should we be interested in the inflammatory response? Um, as I've said, really, it's a very widely uh, manifest uh, situation. So we, we need the clinical outcomes and complications uh, related to acute and chronic inflammation are very common. So we need to understand it for that reason. It, it plays a key role in the host defences uh, and, and the way in which the body responds to injury. And also it initiates healing, which, as we were discussing a little earlier, um, is important from, from the surgical point of view because the inflammatory response, once you've made a surgical wound in a patient, is the first thing which tells the body that it's, it's, it needs to heal that, mm-hmm. that wound. Mm-hmm. Okay. So in terms of defining the inflammatory response, there are a couple of sort of slightly, um, slightly different but similar definitions that I've given here. First of all, we can think of inflammation as a reaction of vascularized and living tissue to a local injury or infection, uh, and it's characterized by the movement of fluid and a particular type of uh, white cell or leukocyte from the blood into the affected tissue. Okay. okay. Is, is, is that a definition that people should learn? I think so. I think it's a very useful uh, starting point yeah. here. And I've particularly underlined vascularized and living because, I mean, there's of interest here is the first of all that we'll see that the you know, vascularization, the, the blood vessel su- uh, supplying tissues are very important in, in, in a, have a key role in how the inflammation occurs. And if a tissue doesn't have a good vascular supply, clearly the inflammatory response won't be as efficient and indeed healing won't be as efficient. Yeah, so if you've got dead tissue, that'll, that'll stimulate the inflammatory response around it, but not in the dead tissue itself. Exactly, and, yeah. so, uh, and so in terms of the, they say the underlined key points here, uh, t- tissues such as cartilage, which are, are known not to have, a, if you like, a, a classically de- developed uh, uh, blood supply, uh-huh. don't mount an inflammatory response quite in the same way as, as normal connective tissues. Yeah. Uh, okay. And, and uh, another thing is that this has a relevance in a forensic setting, interestingly, in that uh, if, a, if an injury occurs after uh, uh, someone has died, then you won't see the classical inflammatory response because the tissue is not living. Right, okay, so we can see reruns of CSI on YouTube, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> moving on today. Okay, so that's that's fine. So so that's that's the, the one uh, sort of way of looking at a definition. The second here is that it's a relatively rapid and short-lived uh, stereotypic response characterised, as I say, by the movement of polymorph neutrophils, this particular type of white cell, and fluid into the affected tissues. Okay. They're just saying the same thing, but in a slightly different way. Okay, so uh, just, just to unpick that a little bit, short-lived, that's just in general, there's no specific time frame. Yes, we're talking, I mean, the inflammatory response certainly ha- will, will, will begin within, within minutes or certainly within hours of, of an injury yep. occurring, but in terms of where does acute inflammation uh, stop and chronic inflammation begin, that's a slightly difficult one, but we 
we're talking usually about days rather than weeks and months. Okay, and stereotypic means? Um, it means that it's, it's a very non-specific reaction. That is to say that irrespective of what the injury is, um, the, 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 the changes that occur in the vessels and the migration of cells is pretty similar no matter, no matter what. So it could be due to a bacterial infection, it could be simply due to a crush injury, it could be due to a hematoma, but nonetheless all those things seem to incite a very similar response yeah. in the tissues. So there's a, there's a common pathway after exactly. a host of injury. Exactly. Okay. So. And we're going to talk about polymorphonucleosides in a minute. Okay. okay. Well, in fact, there uh, it is. There it is. There is one exactly. So this is uh, just a, a simple uh, blood film in which we see this cell, which has got a very highly lobated nucleus, uh, and this is polymorph simply means many shaped, as you know, and so it simply says that this is a as a small phagocytic cell with a very highly lobated nucleus, and it's these cells that we see in their scores in, in the uh, acute inflammatory response migrating into the, into the affected or, or damaged tissue. Okay, so you're looking down the microscope and this is the cell that signifies acute exactly. inflammation. Exactly, yeah, exactly. So. And we're seeing a lot more of these as we go on yeah. in, in the okay. podcast. And, and this is nucleus here, just for clarity, the darker exactly. thing. And yep. you, it's, it's nuclei of different shapes and sizes and the thing that characterizes it comes in various lumps, not always a shape, all uh, kinds of shapes. Highly varied. Polymorph, yeah. polymorph, polymorph, lots of shapes. Exactly. And then this around it is is the cell itself, and the, the lighter yeah. stains of the cytoplasm. Yeah, it's a cyto as if that's a cytoplasm of the cell. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's the polymorph neutrophil. Yeah. Okay, so let's think then about uh, the, the the role of the inflammatory response. So what does it do? It, it responds to, as I say, a number of different stimuli, certainly cell damage itself, so any tissue in the body which is damaged in itself, that releases a number of, uh, of uh, stimuli which then induces the acute inflammatory response. Foreign material, so if there's a uh, say someone uh, sort of puts a, a rose thorn into their thumb by accident and it sits there for a while, that foreign material is going to induce an inflammatory response. Uh, bacteria themselves, of course, we well, well recognise that all sorts of in, in infections lead to an inflammatory response. And what the body's trying to do is to limit the damage that's caused, limit the, the progression of that infection, if, if, if that's the mm -hmm. reason. Mm -hmm. So by localization, eliminating the, the, uh, the damage uh, and, and then initiating healing. Okay, so localization, what's, what's So that? what we're saying is that, so for example, with the rose thorn, which is a nice example sitting in the thumb, uh, maybe some bacteria around it, that the body is now mounting an inflammatory response trying to prevent the bacteria from multiplying and, and becoming uh, more established and also trying to uh, phagocytose, that is to, uh, uh, to eat the debris mm. around the cells that have been damaged by the thorn getting implanted in the tissues. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so this is a schematic. This simply shows some of the, the sort of, in terms of a flow chart, some of the ways in which the inflammatory response can, can uh, progress. And so if we start off with uh, a tissue damage uh, at the beginning here and cells being uh, being lost, and so the acute inflammatory response then becomes established from there. And it depends partly upon the nature of the tissue that we have as to whether or not um, the uh, how, how the tissues respond. So on the left-hand side here, we have, say, a background cell population which can regrow. And so once the damage uh, is localized and, and healing is, is brought about, then the tissues can regenerate. Um, if the cells can't regrow, as shown by the central part here, then you get repair by a different mechanism, often involving scar tissue and fibrous tissue being formed. Uh, and finally, if the uh, damaging agent persists, then you may move from a situation of acute inflammation to chronic inflammation. Okay, so can you give me some examples of cells that can regrow and cells that don't? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think, again, coming back to our example of the, th of the rose thorn in the thumb, um, skin is a very good tissue in terms of regeneration. Mm -hmm. And so if there's been uh, tissue loss um, and some skin has been lost from that area, maybe uh, there's been, uh, as I say, some, some damage, then the skin will, will try to regrow over that area. Mm -hmm. And it's usually very effective at doing mm -hmm. so especially once the, the thorn has been removed and the infection has been eliminated. Mm -hmm. um, but there may be other areas um, where there's been a tissue loss. And here the, the heart is a good example. People don't think of the, the heart and a heart attack as being an example of inflammation very often, but it is. Mm. Uh, once a patient has a myocardial infarct, that the muscle of the, of the, of the, of the heart has died, then there's an inflammatory response in the acute phase. And 
that those cells can't regrow, so the heart will heal itself by scarring and fibrosis. Okay, and then stroke, I suppose, is another example, is it? Absolutely. Yeah. So again, tissue loss in the same way around around the brain. The brain is a slightly peculiar area in that the inflammatory response in, in the in the in the brain is slightly modified by what's known as the blood brain barrier, but, mm. but nonetheless the same principles yeah. that, do that's apply. That's not the sheet in between the surgeon and the anesthetist is often, <laughs> often stated. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, okay, so this is just a, a sort of maybe just an adjunct to that that schematic, which um, thinks again about the, the the flows of which may occur. So we have again beginning with a tissue damage or necrosis, the inflammatory response, and just thinking about the the, the cells moving to the right here, we have the a, a number of these mo polymorph neutrophils that we've mm -hmm. described moving into the area where there's been destruction. And when we see these cells on mass, then we can, we talk about an abscess. So that's all that an abscess is. It's pure and simple, an absolute mass of polymorph neutrophils. Okay, and and is that what pus is? It's just a it load is. of polymorphs. Absolutely, pus is nothing more than the the cell debris of of uh, say tens upon thousands, if not uh, hundreds of thousands, of dead polymorphs and more polymorphs moving into an area, and and that's yeah, that's what pus is. All right. Okay. okay, and so they moving on into the into the uh, the schematic. So if the the damage is neutralized on the left hand side here, and the tissue damage. Is, is, is minimal, then you get, if the tissue is able to regenerate, you get the, the regrowth, um, uh, it shouldn't be really regrowth of dead cells, because the dead cells can't regrow, but regrowth mm -hmm. to replace the dead yeah, cells yeah, rather, yeah. and then resolution. Yeah. Uh, if um, there is damage, but the, if the damage is neutralized, but there's a, a, a number of uh, cells have been lost, then we have this, uh, this term organization, which means when the tissue is basically now repairing itself and the dead debris, the dead cell debris is being phagocytosed, mm -hmm. that is ingested by these cells, and uh, the formation of what I like to call non specific polyfiller, which is granulation tissue. Yeah. So, granulation tissue is again a useful thing to think about, which is the way in which the body, once the acute inflammation is beginning to subside, the way in which the body repairs it, it forms this very non specific polyfiller, which makes good the defect and then allows other cells to migrate in, such as fibroblasts, yeah. to make more collagen and heal the area. Yeah, okay, so there's a fibroblast coming, so you need a good blood supply, the granulations, which is sort of a, a very fragile Indeed. bit of tissue with yeah. new vessels in there. So if you look at it clinically, it's red and uh, looks a little bit sort of um, granular and lumpy on the surface, yes. which are the, the sort of little bits of yeah. new vessel. And if you touch it, it bleeds very easily. Exactly. And again, if we come back to our, our thumb analogy uh, or thumb example, which is, I think, very useful here, if there was a scab formed on the finger, and we all know it's not a good thing to pick a scab, yeah. but if you pick a scab, the, the stuff which is bleeding or those delicate little vessels underneath, yeah. that's, that's granulation, granulation tissue. tissue. Okay, okay. And an organisation just is remodelling, really, is it? Exactly yeah. so. And okay. as I say, and, and again, on the right-hand side here, if you have a persisting damage, then... Uh, the organization continues, but the inflammation also is continuing. So you have this, if you like, ongoing uh, unresolved war between the, the, the resolution trying to make good the damage, but the injury persisting. And so then you then move from acute inflammation to chronic inflammation. So if you're trying to pull the thorn out, the end gets snapped off, yep. stays in there, it stays red and hot and yep. tender for a while until the well, you either get suggested or spat out by the body, isn't it? Well, exactly. I mean, there's this this localization thing is usually very efficient, and so usually you, you wall off the, the 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 little residual foreign body, and eventually it gets, uh, as you say, moves towards the surface and comes out of its own accord. But if it's deep seated and isn't resolved, um, then you can move to a, you know a, a quite nasty chronic inf mm. infection. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay.